Yo, Elliot, I do contract work, digital marketing for a marketing agency, making $60,000 a year, working 30 hours a week. My goal was always to use my extra time to work on building out my freelance work or maybe even my own marketing agency. However, I'm finding that I simply have no motivation whatsoever. I think my biggest resistance is around prospecting and sales. I also feel a huge amount of imposter syndrome. I don't necessarily feel confident that I could actually take someone's business to the next level. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. You're making a problem where there is no problem. I want you to recognize that. You're making a problem by trying to, you're trying to do something that you really don't need to be doing. You're making $60,000 a year working 30 hours a week. Focus on that, right? I'm not telling you don't have any hopes and dreams, but focus on that so that what? So you become a master at that. We live in the microwave, instant, digital, give it to me now culture where no one recognizes that mastery takes time. Mastery takes effort. You got to put in your time. You got to put in your effort. That's one, one thing my uncle used to say. He said, you got to put in your time, brother. He said, you got to put in your time, brother. That's how he talks. He's like a 70s gangster. You got to put in your time, brother. Nobody going to give you nothing. This is my dad's brother. You got to put in your time. And obviously, you haven't put in your time. Because if you're doing a job right now, first of all, you should be ashamed of yourself for taking $60,000 a year working for this marketing company, and you have no uh, confidence in yourself that you could actually make your marketing work, right? So the first thing you got to do is actually get good at your job. I, it's so shocking to me how many times people want to go and start their own thing, but they suck at what they do. How are you going to start your own thing that requires you wear seven hats and you're not even good at the one fucking hat you're wearing? Get good at what you're doing. Those $30, 30 hours a week, look, really, the way things, I think things would be better for most people if they just do the best they can where they are with what they got. You're earning $60,000 working 30 hours per week. How about you put in more time so that you can earn more money for the clients that you're, you have in this digital marketing agency so that you can get a raise doing what you're already doing. You can show your boss. You can say, hey, look, I'm putting in a little extra time at home. And as a result, I've learned these new things and I can implement this new strategy and I can help our clients get more money. And as a result, you could charge more for that. And perhaps I can get a raise. That might be in the cards for you. And that, listen, that's a hell of a lot easier. It requires some humility. It requires a shitload of humility that most people don't have. Trust me, I'm practicing myself. Most people don't have the humility to say, I'm going to allow this person who's taken the risks and obey their authority. There's a reason why your boss is his boss or the, or the owner or the CEO is the owner. Because he put the risk in, he put the time in, he put the effort in, and he built the infrastructure for what? For you to come in and be cozy, to earn a salary, and to help him do this thing. See that job as an internship. See that man as a mentor. Put your time in. Help him make more money. And as a result, two things will happen. Potentially, you'll make more money. But if not, you'll learn how to do that job so well that that whole imposter syndrome, you should have an imposter syndrome because you're trying to be an imposter. You would be an imposter. If you started your own business, you would be an imposter because you have no confidence in yourself to do what you're actually being paid $60,000 a year to do. So do your fucking job, get good at your job, and then you'll feel relief. You will feel confidence you'll feel your ability to do what you actually say you're doing you can do so that's it my opinion is back off back off on the high fluting thinking right for a moment i don't want to tell anybody not to think big but sometimes we think so big that it's out of proportion for where we are and like i say oftentimes your big thinking often is a premonition it's not a it's not a direction it's a premonition not a mission right Big thinking is a premonition, not a mission. Not all the time, but a lot of times. What do I mean by that? That that big thinking premonition, the premonition essentially is, hey, this might be available to me sometime in the future. I'm going to do the best that I can with what I got right here and see how that unfolds. That's how my life has unfolded. I've had premonitions. There are a lot of things that have come to me in my life that I haven't worked directly for.
I didn't work directly for this thing. I had a premonition that it was on its way. I wanted this thing, but I worked directly with what I was working with day in and day out. And then that thing showed up. So you may be having a premonition about your own marketing agency, but don't go try to make that happen right now because you're not ready to do it. You don't have the skill set and you don't have the maturity level to do it. Stay where you are. This is a problem in our, in our culture right now, man. Everybody, it, this is why relationships don't work. Marriages don't work. Businesses don't work. Nothing fucking works because people are too busy to hop to the next thing. I want to hop to the next thing. I want to move on to the next thing. I want to get to the bigger, better, faster right away. But yo, you never laid a foundation. Charles Pollock, we used to say it like this when it came, comes to uh, strength and conditioning, right? Because when you're going to be a, an athlete, you got to build a foundation. Your foundation is your stability. And then you could build power on top of that. People want to go and do all the powerful exercises. I want to do Olympic weightlifting. I want to jump 48 inches, whatever it is, right? They want to do this, all this powerful explosive shit. But it's like, yo, bro, but you can't even do a bodyweight squat. You can't even hold a plank for 10 minutes, for a minute. You can't even do a, a proper lunge. Get the foundation first. He, what he says is people are, the way people are is they're trying to fire a, a rocket from a rowboat, a, cano, a cannon from a canoe. You can't fire a cannon from a canoe. You are on shaky ground, brother. You want to shoot this, shoot this cannon, you're going to blow your whole self up. Your whole shit's going to blow up. Another one I heard somebody else say it like this. People are like trying to put on their bow tie before they put on the suit. You got to put on the whole suit just like everybody else. You got to put one leg in, in, inside the other. Put your pants on one leg at a time, just like everybody else. You got to put on the damn suit, then the bow tie. But everybody is, oh, what kind of bow tie? Oh, I want to get that bow tie. I love that bow tie. I can't wait to wear that bow tie. It's like, yeah, but now you don't, you don't have any freaking clothes on. You didn't do the foundation work. So do the foundation work, bro, and you'll be okay, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.